everyone. Happy Wednesday morning. My name is Zachary Thayer, and this is the fourth episode of my show. I've messed up the numbering over the past couple weeks because I started with episode zero as my episode one, and that threw me off, especially with me doing these last minute. I need to make a commitment not to do these last minute. I do want to keep this weekly show going. I do enjoy making it. I believe it's for my creative good and that it's part of my calling. However, I have not made it a priority and that's why the past couple weeks I've literally waited until Wednesday morning <laughs> before I start my real job to make one of these bad boys. So let's, let's both agree not to do that anymore. Over the past seven days, there's been talks of two things. One, how unbelievably cold it's been <laughs> lately. Like supposedly it's colder in Chicago than it is in Antarctica right now. I don't know if that's fake news or not, but that's what people have been saying. The other thing that's been amongst the social media news wave, whatever you want to call it, is all this talk about abortion versus pro-life movement, different bills that are being passed in different states regarding abortion rights. And for those of you who don't know, I am a conservative Christian and most of the people that I'm friends with tend to lean that way. So most of the postings that I've seen have been of outrage against New York in particular for passing their recent law. This issue is particularly important to me, but not for the reason you may think. Just to get this out there, I am pro-life. And the reason I am pro-life is because I've had to live it out. You see, my brother is named Nathaniel, and he has multiple disabilities. When he was being developed in my mom's womb, one of the valves in his brain filled with water either didn't develop at all or it broke. And so his brain soaked in all this water like a sponge. The doctors saw this coming a mile away and they knew that it would cause complications. Therefore, my parents were asked to basically abort Nathaniel so they wouldn't have to go through the birth. My parents thought that wouldn't be right. And the doctors argued back, look, your son's gonna have a short lifespan. It's gonna be a low quality of life. It's not, it's not gonna be worth it to go through this at all. So you might as well abort him right now. But my parents decided to go through with it and they made Nathaniel's life, the life of taking care of someone with special needs as a part of their life purpose and calling. You see, calling and purpose is more than just what you do for a job. It's your entire life, whether you're getting paid to do it or not, is part of your purpose. Taking care of me and raising me was a part of my parents' life purpose. And taking care of and raising Nathaniel, just the same. And so, the way that they've taken care of Nathaniel is by ensuring that he's comfortable, that he's happy, that he has a roof over his head, that he's fed, that he's cleaned up after all the dirty things that humans do, and that he has the best quality of life he can possibly have. Now, I've seen what taking care of someone with disabilities I've seen what the toll that can take on the caregiver. I've seen it on my dad and my mom, the physical, financial, emotional, spiritual, and mental toll that it can take. And even more so now that my mom's a widow and taking care of Nathaniel mostly by herself, it's hard. <laughs> There's no easy way ar around it. Taking care of someone with disabilities is not a walk in the park. 
However, despite everything that's happened, despite my dad's passing, and even though Nathaniel very well could outlive mom and me, he will always be a part of our lives in some way, most likely. I know for a fact that neither my dad nor my mom would take any of those days back. Yes, there have been heartbreaking, exhausting days, but taking care of Nathaniel and ensuring his life has been worth it. But it would have been super easy to abort Nathaniel <laughs> because it's difficult taking care of someone with disabilities. Like, I get it. I get why some people have probably have made that decision in the past because it's the easy thing to do. Want to know what's even easier though? What's even easier than choosing not to take responsibility for a child is just simply saying, hey, abortion's wrong and sharing long articles about the evils of abortion and giving out, throwing out your two cents on the issue, sharing awkward memes saying how all abortionists are evil and all these goofy things that pro-lifers do thinking that they're making a difference. Just stating your opinion and calling the other side evil isn't enough. You're not helping. <laughs> All you're doing is preaching to the choir just so you can get likes and hearts on your status, but you're doing nothing to help the unborn. I appreciate my fellow pro-lifers. I appreciate your passion for this issue. I would just ask, as somebody who is the product of a family that has had to make a hard decision and had to make sacrifices in order to be pro-life, please don't stop there. Don't let that be all that you do. For one, be kind with your rhetoric, <laughs> calling Somebody that you disagree with evil isn't a good way to convince them to be on your side. And we need to do more to help the families who have made the hard sacrificial choices in order to make a pro-life decision. If you know of a single mother, help her out. Find out what she needs. If she needs help buying groceries or free babysitting or whatever come by her side and assist her reward her reward her for not aborting her child and choosing to be a mother it's so easy to just say hey abortion's wrong we should give those babies up for adoption well are you adopting like i understand that the adoption system is complicated and it's expensive to adopt the child but what can we do about it? Can we hold fundraisers in order for parents to be able to adopt more? Can we do things to make it cheaper, cheaper and easier to adopt? I don't know enough about the issue to say what we should do, but don't just yell at people saying to adopt babies when you're not willing to do the work yourself. I'm happy to say that despite the initial outrage and annoying post that I saw at first when all this news started to break, it's cool to be able to see this other side of the pro-life movement saying, hey, we need to do more than just tell people not to have an abortion. We need to come alongside families that choose to give their baby's life despite how easy it would have been to not do so. But we need to do more. So whether it's being a foster parent, helping a single mom, helping a family with a child with disabilities, buying groceries, babysitting, adopting, working within 
the government system to make improvements to the adoption system and making sure babies have quality of life and even not just babies, but loving people from the moment that they're born to the moment that they die, ensuring that they have the best quality of life possible.